high energy Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and that's Peter Rusick next to me. He's from Hawaiian Electric. And we're going to talk about something dear to our hearts, well, involved in our hearts. <laughs> Hi, Peter. Yeah. So we have, a, we have the title of this show is uh, Heat Waves Require More Energy to Cool. And what provokes that is the fact that we've had a lot of heat waves lately. Yeah. Um, not necessarily in Hawaii. Hawaii's been hot, but other places yeah. have been much hotter. And if you believe in climate change, you believe we're going to see more of that, right? Well, in fact, it's been a record uh, this last uh, four or five months, actually. Uh, started in May, earlier than our, quote, summer usually starts. It's, it's extended into September, and it'll probably be into October as well, of some record heat. And unless you've been living in a very cool cave somewhere, you know that. <laughs> uh, and um, But... You know, what people don't automatically think of or perhaps don't think of until they get their electric bill is that uh, the air conditioning we're using more and more uh, it increases your electric bill. That's, that's the, the subtitle of the show. Air conditioning doesn't come free. Yeah, well, <laughs> it doesn't. And uh, it, it's, you know, it's kind of a two-edged sword. First of all, it doesn't come free. And second of all, all those air conditioners are emitting heat out into the atmosphere or and, uh, and, and, you know, some uh, stuff that makes our situation a little worse. But uh, there's no question that over the last uh, 20 or so years or 40 or so years, really, uh, the amount of air conditioning has increased as we built new buildings uh, that have blocked the traditional trade winds. As we've got more and more uh, concrete, unfortunately, instead of, of soil and so forth. Uh, I don't want to get the numbers right, but... Uh, we had homes in 1970, which was about the time I got here, we had 14% of homes on Oahu had air conditioning. And it was really unusual to see one of those boxes sticking out of a window somewhere. Mm -hmm. Today, 68% of homes Big have air difference. conditioning, either you know built in as part of the apartment or whatever, or they've been added uh, two, three. Sometimes you see, you go by houses and you see three or four, five uh, of the boxes sticking out there. So. Just on its own, that's a huge increase. And then you put on top of that the fact that uh, this has been a historically hot month, hot, hot few months. And as you say, it's probably going to be the new normal. It's, uh, everything we know about climate change suggests it's going to continue. Uh, and uh, that's going to mean more of air conditioners being used more. You know, walking down memory lane with you here, back in the uh, statehood time in the yeah. '60s, um, there was very, very few air conditioners. As a matter of fact, it wasn't considered, you know, natural. Yeah. Uh, the natural is the trade winds, right? Open the house up, sure. and there was a whole school of architecture about that. Open the house up, let right. the wind blow through, you'll be happy. And, and I suppose that was that was popular. The problem is that if you if you are building, you know, a brand new house with a lot of lot to it, you can do that. And if you're in a place where the trades do blow, you can right. do that. But if you're in a condo, and we have, what, I don't know, 1,800 condo, uh, you know, Hawaii, uh, yeah. Hawaii property regimes, you know, now these days, 1,800 of them, and, and you can't let the wind blow through your, your house. It doesn't work. Right. So you've got to have air conditioning if you want it to be cool. Um, there were fans around statehood, but air conditioning is so much more efficient. So when the market, you know, that, that is people, uh, wanted to have it cooler, they said to the developers and the managers and uh, the, the, guy, the sellers of units, they said, hmm, we've got to have air conditioning. So the result is those 1,800 white property regimes, horizontal property regimes, all have air conditioning, or most of them do these days. Right. How could you sell one for like two, three million dollars, which is what they're going for for the offshore market, uh, without air conditioning? That's unthinkable. Right, and 1970, 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, we weren't building homes in Eva and Kapolei. I mean, there was, there was a very small Eva Beach community on the ocean, pretty much, where they could take advantage of the, of the prevailing winds. We didn't, you know, we didn't cover the, the old, you know, sugarcane and, and pineapple fields with, with homes because you couldn't air condition them and you couldn't live there if you weren't air conditioned. Now, of course, the second city, uh, you know, we've got a lot of homes that not, not necessarily two and three million. Well, they may be, unfortunately, two or three million dollar homes, but they're really starter homes, very small townhouses that are, are, are going to be basically unlivable uh, unless there is air conditioning. So it's nobody's, 
you know, nobody's fault. Uh, nobody's blaming, uh, you know, people that want to just have a good night's sleep and, and be, uh, uh, but you're right, the, the, in, the increase in, in high rises. And, you know, the other thing we don't think about as much is, is, you know, when we started having one or two or three or four or five computers in our home, those generate heat. So back in the day when we were all living kind of out in the open, we would have a, a stove, we would have a refrigerator, which pushed a little heat out the back. We'd have a television, but that was about it. And that was our electricity use. And then you started bringing in the computers and the bigger TVs and things like that. And although we've come a long way in reducing the heat output, they still generate heat. And in addition, your computers want to be in a fairly sealed environment. They, you know, you don't want the, the EVA planes, the dust from the EVA planes blowing through your, your, your home office onto your computer. So you tend to clo you know, lock it up. So you, you close the windows, the heat's being generated, and you really have no choice but to air condition. Same thing with a lot of high-rise buildings. I, mean, I live in, a, in an apartment building without air conditioning. Uh, but um, we have one of those rollout portable things for, and we've rolled it out this year and used it this year more than ever just to keep the bedroom tolerable. One factor is um, also in this same period we're talking about historically, uh, the cost of air conditioner equipment has gone down. Sure. Uh, we can talk about, uh, you know, how they're more efficient later, but yeah. the cost has dramatically come down. And uh, you know, I, in our house, we had an air conditioner installed in 1973, and it's been working all these years, okay? <laughs> well, here's, here's something interesting. We had to replace it. Why did we have to replace it? Because it worked on a remote, and the remote got fried. <laughs> there was no way to replace the remote from 20, whatever, maybe yeah. six years ago. So we had to buy the whole thing in order to get Anyway, the point is the point that do last a long yeah, time. Right. But I trust when you got a new one, you got an Energy Star one. Yes, we did. Okay. And that's <laughs> that's a big that's a big thing. If you are if if you had told me that that it had you were still using that twenty year old air conditioner, I would have severely uh, castigated you. I would have ridden you read you the riot act because they are much more efficient now and maybe the the uh, the non energy star units are a little cheaper. But uh, it's a big mistake not to have an energy star because it's going to use electricity overall. It's going to reduce the, the need to generate that electricity. Uh, you know, it's just the, the, the current. You don't have to be Greta Thunberg to know that you've you got to reduce your, your carbon <laughs> footprint and you've got to help us reduce the use of oil. And that's one of the ways you do it. So, uh, you know, energy star has made a, a lot of advances and they, they get better all the time. I've, Many times heard people say, you know, I replaced my old one and got an Energy Star one or an Energy Star refrigerator. My electric bill instantly dropped thirty, forty dollars, and you know that's all the difference. But if you're going to use it all the time and not use it carefully, uh, then you're going to see that electric bill go up. Right so, now. so what? What is the thing? I know in you know in office buildings we've had a number of shows about this. You have these uh, energy efficiency contractor people. They right. work either by a consulting uh, business model, or uh, I'm saving you so much, and you, right. you know, I keep part of his savings. Um, that has an effect too, isn't it? It's like the, the Star Appliances, except it's um, it's more you know high tech, I suppose, more mechanized. Well, I you know, if you have a building and you've got to uh, keep your budget under control, you want to control the use of of electricity, and that means controlling the use of air conditioning. Also, there's a comfort factor for the people that are working in the building. It's very typical, or it has been, uh, you know, on a floor, the people that are nearest the air conditioning or nearest the vents are freezing. And the people that are out at the, the you know, the far edges, uh, especially if they have a window that may be heating up the room, they're, they're, they're burning. And if in, in order to keep those people at the far end under the, you know, who are next to the windows and far from the, from the air conditioning ducts, uh, cool enough, you keep the people uh, that are near to the, the ducts, uh, in, you know, in heavy, in heavy clothing, or, or they actually will put a, you know, I've been in buildings where there have been heat, uh, little heat units under the desk of people, doubling the electricity use. The heat makes the air conditioning think, i got to produce more air conditioning because I'm detecting this heat. So when you have one of these contractors that will come in, 
uh, they can start looking at, at what they can do and, and doing the, you know, using technology to control your air conditioning. It used to be that if you wanted air, if you, over the weekend or, or after hours, if you wanted air conditioning, the entire floor would have to be air conditioned because that's the way it was set up. Now, in many cases, air conditioning can be restricted to a certain part of that floor. And, uh, you know, especially if you're going to pay for it extra, you, you want to not be, uh, you know, be using too much. So we have a lot of stuff. You know, the whole smart home concept is really going first in, in offices and in buildings. And so and air conditioning is central in all that. Absolutely. And, you know, when you have a, an energy management system, when you have a building operator, whether it's a hotel or an office building or an apartment building, even uh, a modern one, they, they have people who are trained and they have equipment that allows them to control that energy use because, you know, they, they have, they can't, in a hotel, you can't raise the hotel rates in summer and say it's to make up for the air conditioning. You got to control the use. Yeah. And, uh, you know, pretty much all of us have stayed in, in hotels where, you know, if you go out of the room, everything turns off or you pull your key out of the little, your, your key card out of the little lock. And so there are ways to do all these things, but you have to invest a certain amount to get going. And then, the, and whether it's hiring one of these energy service managers or bringing in the equipment and teaching your own uh, building maintenance people to do it themselves, but in the long run, it pays off in so many ways. I've often thought that um, you know the hotel thing is is not only here; it's everywhere. You know, you take you take your room key and, right. and leave. And everything turns off, so you're saving a lot of energy that way, including air conditioning, I think. Right. So why don't we do that in residential units? Why don't we do that in condo units, especially when, when you have um, central air in that, in that building? Yeah. Uh, it would save so much money. In fact, it, you know, it could be required by code or something, couldn't it? It could. It could. Uh, you know, the pro the, you do run into, when, when you're talking about homes, whether it's a single-family home or a, a townhouse, whatever, you know, when you tell the, the developer, we're going to require you to do this and such, the Dell developer is going to say, you know, these homes are already too expensive. And if you're going to require me to do this, you're require, going to require me to wire the place for, for, uh, for solar power or solar hot water. It's going to drive up the price and people already can't pay these prices. So there, there is, you know, there is a rub there with a hotel or an office building. Uh, you have uh, a company that's interested in saving money they don't and have to spend. they know how to do the calculation. And they have, they, of course they do. And they, they, they can see that if they invest a certain amount in an energy management system, they will get that money back. But uh, if, you're, if you're a single homeowner and you're going to buy a townhouse in Coppola and, you know, all of a sudden there are all these things that you don't, you, you don't know you want yet, uh, maybe you will in two years or five years, or you know, maybe you'll want to put solar on the roof, or you'll want all these things. But you want to get that home at the lowest possible price. So you know, there. Uh, I don't. I think there are a lot of things that could be required, and there are a lot of pushbacks. There's a lot of pushback when you try to go, you know, go too far. We saw that in the water heater issue a few years ago. Yeah, that, yeah. it's the same kind of thing. Um, yeah, and people say, "Oh, I'll do it later." Yeah. Don't charge me for it now. I'll do it later. Right, you know? right. And, and maybe they will. And when they do that, like anything else, if you have to retrofit your home for it some kind of expensive. wiring, it's going to cost you yeah. more than if it were built in. But, you know, it's a cash flow system. It's what I have to pay today versus what I imagine I'm going to pay tomorrow. And now so, the office building situation, yeah. the office manager, office building manager or owner, he's making a decision essentially for you because... Um, you know, it's his building, and he wants it to be e efficient. Right. Uh, and he knows that his investment in this kind of efficiency technology is going to reduce operating expenses in that building. Exactly. So he can, he can say to his tenants or prospective tenants, it's going to be cheaper for you because I'm efficient on my electrical usage, my air conditioning, and so forth. And that's pretty appealing. That's a competitive feature, um, you know, that he can sell to prospective tenants. Sure. Very Absolutely. valuable to have that. You, you know... These days, I don't think you can not not have that. I don't think you can uh, you can say to, to prospective tenants, you know, we're not going to manage that. We're just going to let the prices do whatever they do, and well, I'll send you a bill. And you'll say, wait a minute, that's crazy. Uh, you know, as a renter in, a, in an office building, or you know, you don't say this in a hotel, but you're de facto you're saying uh, to to the hotel operator, 
I'm expecting you to take care of this. You're not, you know, you, and I don't want to pay, you know, I don't want, I've got, already got the resort fee, which I don't know what that's for, but, you know, I don't want to pay the air conditioning fee on top of that. So, yeah, they, there is, uh, there are certain uh, uh, really, you know, certain benefits to, uh, people are always saying, oh, the hotels use a lot of electricity, but they use it much more efficiently yeah. than most of us. These big new buildings, you know, the new, uh, they're very expensive, unfortunately, but, and people will say, oh, they must be using a lot of power. But on a custom, you know, on a, on a residence by resident basis, they're probably using less than my home, uh, my single family home, because I don't have an engineer for my single family home who can say, you know, here's what we're going to do. We're going right. to turn down the uh, certain time of day. We're going to turn down the, uh, the two, two degrees down on the, on the refrigerator and we'll save X amount of money. Uh, I've got it in our news release, but every degree you of war, you know, you raise the, the degree, the temperature that the air conditioning is putting out, you save, a, a, I think, mean, 3% on your electric bill. So, although Hawaiian Electric would sell less electricity if there were more efficiency out there, uh, you're still pitching efficiency. Uh, because at the end of the day, you don't want people to get concerned about their electric bills, right? And um, you know, and 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 do stranger things yet. Yeah, because of we, that. we we are committed to 100% renewables by 2045, as you know. We're committed to efficiency because uh, if efficiency lowers the demand, then what getting to that 100% is easier. And uh, but as you say, we we are we have customers, and we have 450,000 of them here in the state. And when they get higher electric bills, they call up. We, we're getting calls right now. One of the reasons we've you know, publicized this a bit right now, we're getting calls from solar customers. We're saying, how come my electric bill's going up? And we have to explain to them that, first of all, it's hotter and you're using more air conditioning. And these warm, muggy days, overcast, today as we, as we tape this, as we, we do this, it's completely gray outside. It's been raining. It's completely gray. There's no more solar being generated. So you're going to have less coming from your roof. You're going to take more from the grid. Uh, and, you know, one of the other things that tends to happen, unfortunately, when somebody has solar is they think, wow, the electricity is so cheap. So I'll add another refrigerator. I'll put in another television. So in the end, their load is higher than it would be if they didn't have solar. That's so ironic. It is ironic. It's a, nat it's a human kind of thing, you know. Oh, I can do this, you know, I can finally get that fourth television. And so, you know, they're calling and saying, why is my electric bill going up? And the reason is very simple. You're generating less from your roof, and you're using more to cool your home, and you're not being careful because in your mind now, oh, my electricity is so cheap, I don't have to be careful. But you do have to be careful if you want to avoid the higher bills. So there's so many factors working on the chart with this. I mean, one is it getting warmer and you want to use your air conditioning and be reasonably comfortable. Um, two is uh, when you went out and had that spreadsheet done by your friendly solar installer, he was operating on certain assumptions of right. what you'd need. Now you have more appliances in the house. It's hotter. You need more air conditioning. And the uh, the calculations that were on that spreadsheet are no longer appropriate, right? Exactly. Right. <laughs> what we've always told people before they go out in a contract for solar is see how much they can reduce their, their load so that they don't have to get more solar than they absolutely need, which people do, some, you know, many people do. Then they get the solar and they see the electricity is that cheap and they think, well, why not? I'll add another this or another that. And then when they need the, elect you know, when they need the power from the grid, to support that, um, if, you know, overnight or in, on days like like today, and sometimes you know we've had forty days without of, of rain and storm, and again that's going to become that I think, could the happen any time. Well, I think more overcast and more storms is going to be the new normal as well. Then uh, you know all of a sudden it, it's it's harder to you know what happened to my what happened to my savings. You got you've got to. In the old days, when you had so few appliances, you never thought twice about electricity. Today, it's a factor. You have to think about it. It's part of a new running your, Yeah, running your home. So let, let's talk about the future for a minute. Oh, I do want to say one other thing yes. before, if I may. And, you know, we're, we're making a big to-do about this. And we've, we've seen articles in the paper and so forth. We have enough generation. We have enough capacity. All, you know, knock on wood, all things operating as they should, and they, they generally do, to meet the demand. So uh, we're, not, we're not trying to do this 
primarily because we're, uh, you know, we're worried about meeting the demand. We're worried about our customers who, um, you know, pay, as we know, high rates compared to the mainland. Total, the total energy bill is low compared to the mainland, but uh, no question we, we're paying high rates here. And these are our customers, and we want to help them take care of their home energy bills. They don't want, we don't want them, you know, to plan a family budget that says, here's about what my electric bill is going to be every month, and then all of a sudden go boom. So right. this is primarily about helping customers. Yeah, yeah. Um, important that, um, you know, people, um, people are in a kind of harmony about this sort of thing, and they don't yeah. get excited about uh, uh, electric bills that don't fit in their budget. But I, I wanted to go forward, uh, look, look into the future with you, okay. Peter. So we have so factors put working. Put on my future cap. Your future cap. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have factors working. It's going to get hotter. Sorry to say, even Greta Thunberg can't stop that. No. Although she's trying really hard. She's doing a she's doing a <laughs> job, amazing. boy. She is she's the Joan of Arc. I saw a cartoon Joan of Arc. depicted her as the Joan of Arc of the and, you know with a couple of polar bears on her. her side there. Yeah, she she's awesome. I don't care what what's his name says. She's awesome. <laughs> what's his name? Never mind. So so, um, so it's going to get hotter. And there'll be storms, and maybe there'll be overcast, and the solar won't work as, as well as the spreadsheet. And, and the spreadsheet may not have been designed for any of this. Um, and so the solar panels may not deliver as much. They're going to make greater call on you, uh, greater demand. Um, and I suppose another factor is that the, the solar cells that are out there are getting old. Uh, they've been in place for a long time. And I, I don't know what the useful life is, but there is a useful life somewhere. Sure. Um, so. I just wonder, looking into the future, what do we have? Oh, and if you say that right now, the utility uh, for all islands uh, knows reasonably well what to expect in terms of demand in hot weather, um, does that mean if it gets hotter yet and the demand is greater, you're prepared for that? Uh, is there a plan? Could there be, should there be a plan uh, to sort of meet, meet, meet that temperature rise at the pass and always stay ahead of it? Well, we try. We try to look into the future. We try to go, you know, we have basically three R's that we've talked about. Uh, reliability, that's job one. And so part of that is thinking about uh, what, what our needs will be. Resilience, that's, uh, you know, the second, not the second in order of importance, but it's the second R to my, in my mind. And that is, you know, as things do get worse, as the storms get worse and so forth, can we either survive our system, either survive them or quickly recover for them. And then underlying all that is the need to go to renewables. And when we look at what we need, we look at, we say, we're, we're not going to put it all in solar. We can't do it all solar because, as we just said, 40 days and 40 nights a few years ago of basically rain and overcast. And we can't do it all with wind so because, you know, wind is 24-7, which is good. In a very strong storm, the wind, the wind, uh, the turbines are locked down, or feathered. You know, the blades turn so they're not turning. So at the very moment when you may need the electrical you know, system most, yeah. uh, it has to be locked down because of the violent forces of the hurricane. Parts of it, and so you have to do all the various renewables that are available to you. You have to do, uh, you know, biomass so you can have some firm, reliable power. You have to do the solar, you have to do the wind, you have to do hydro where you can, uh, mostly on the Big Island now and maybe you know, a few other places. You have to have this broad spectrum of things because everything is not going to work all the time at the times you absolutely need it. And that's, where the, you know, that's why the planning guys make the big bucks, or they should make the big bucks, I guess, uh, because they've got to figure out what this is going to mean you know, as things get warmer, as we get more days of overcast, more days of storm. Uh, I can't, you know, can't guarantee you, but I can, that we have the answers. But I can guarantee you that we're we're looking at them. We're looking at these things very, very seriously because, uh, you know, they impact our overall ability again to serve our customers. And we're all here in Hawaii. The good news is, uh, we're all the customers. All, all of us who work at the electric company are also customers. And you know, so we're we and our family and our friends are all going to be impacted by the decisions we're making right now to move ahead on this project or that project. Why can't you go faster? Well, we're going pretty darn fast, first of all. But second of all, we don't want to close off the option for some new technology that's going to come and be part of that 
portfolio that's going to add to the, 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 ver the variety of choices that we have. So we're trying to move at a, at a reasonable pace, but not get so far that we, we can get to 100%, but then we turn around and say, oh, too bad we couldn't get that new technology because we're already at 100%. Right, right. The ongoing yeah. syncopation. Exactly. So, um, you know, so uh, something, you know, you touched on a minute ago is, um, so, okay, suppose, suppose we got great demand, huge demand, you know, more than perhaps we expected. And indeed, you know, the heat and the climate change is moving faster than we expected. Yeah. And suppose it's just not enough out there to satisfy that demand. Um, what can I do as a, as a utility customer, as a homeowner, what can I do to help? Or um, can I, should, I, should I curtail my own use some way? Um, will you curtail? Will you need to curtail? Is there curtailment in our future, either voluntary or involuntary, so to keep the system running um, at the same time, uh, you know, as these greater demands are being made? I would, you know, we're committed to not having to ask our customers to sacrifice their, you know, convenience, their safety, their comfort uh, for, uh, because there's not enough electricity. I mean, that is part of the reliability or overall picture. That's our ticket of admission. We can't, uh, we can't go forward on the assumption that we're going to say our customers, uh, you know, you can't have it. But we can say to our customers, please be as efficient as possible. Please, you know, curtail yourself in the sense that you don't have to have the air conditioning on all day when nobody's at home. You can, you know, nowadays there are timers. You could have it turn on half an hour before, or you, or you could do smart home on your phone. Turn it, it on. It doesn't half, cost much at all. No, turn it on, you know, 10 minutes before you get home. You get in your car to drive home, or you get on the, get on, the uh, on the heart to, drive, to go home, and, uh, you know, tap, 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 get the air conditioning going. But there's no reason to leave it on all day. There's no reason to run it in every room of the house when basically you're going to have dinner, you're going to go into the den and watch television, and you're going to go, going to, go to bed. I hope, you, I hope you're writing this down because this is going to be on the final exam. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it will be. And so, you know, we want you to, to use every bit you need, but don't use any bit that you don't need. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of ways to do it. Some of the best kind, of course, would be the kind where you don't have to do anything. The best kind, eventually there'll be, you'll tell your home energy system, I don't want to spend more than $180 this month. So I want you, home energy system, to control my refrigerator, my air conditioner, and so forth, so that I don't get a bill of more That's than That's great this. stuff. Stay I mean, that, within the budget. Yeah, and that then you won't think about it again until the next month when you get your bill and say, okay, I, I was a little bit upset this month, you know, I didn't have quite enough air conditioning or I didn't have, so I'm never willing to go to $185 on my bill, but I want you, electric system, computer system, to, uh, you know, and, and the other thing many people now have and more and more people will have time of use rates. So time of use rates lets you save money by doing things when it's cheap. Draw it down when it's cheap. And, and Charges you more when, yeah. you know, like in the peak during the day when we have the greatest demand. And you'll be able to tell your, your, your home system, you know, it, it won't hurt if you turn my, my refrigerator down two degrees overnight. Nothing's going to unfreeze. Nothing's going to go bad. So you do that. And you, in order, by doing that, you keep my electric bill under this. You keep my, you may be more about how your total use. I think we're going to see more of that, Peter. I think well, that's really visionary. Yeah. And, and I want to add, we're almost at the end of our, end of our time. I'll tell you, my thought, my wraparound thought here is that this is not unimportant. This is very important. Okay. If you look at the heat waves in Europe, people are dying because it was, so, and especially elderly people who can't, can't handle the heat. And this is happening in, in the mainland also. Um, so we really have to pay attention to the availability of air conditioning to our population. Uh, it's Absolutely. serious. And, and therefore, we have to make systems to, you know, make sure that everybody gets what they need. Absolutely. And, you know, as I said, we're committed to giving everybody the, the power they need, maintain their comfort, maintain their security, maintain their, you know, basic convenience of life. Uh, we just don't want to have to give more than that. We want to meet every, <laughs> every justifiable need. Uh, we don't want to meet the one, you know, we don't want to have be, be in a position where, uh, you know, people are keeping their air conditioning on in empty houses all day. And as a result, as you say, as a result, there's not enough, you know, 
services or not, a, it, it, you know, there's not enough juice to keep the fan in an elderly person's apartment going. That's not right. We wouldn't live, we don't want to live with that. And you're hurting somebody else. You're hurting your neighbor when you do that. Exactly. Thank you, Peter. It's a pleasure. Uh, Peter Rosek, a spokesman for Hawaiian Electric Company. And as I always say, Hawaii, Hawaiian Electric Company is Hawaii's electric company. There you go. That's I'm right. going to take that up with the branding department. They should, <laughs> we, we may change all the signs. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Thanks. Aloha.